Hello, hello everyone. It is Jackie with Pocket of the Preschool. Tonight we are talking all things Thanksgiving and a thankful theme and family. So that's what we are um, gonna talk about tonight. But I want to, I want you to tell me in the comments, right down here, tell me, do you do a Thanksgiving theme? Do you do a thankful theme? Do you do a food theme? Like what do you do in November? Um, what's your theme kind of like the week of Thanksgiving? giving um because i just love to know what you guys are doing um and i know everyone loves to see what other teachers are doing too so what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk around the classroom and i'm gonna show you all the things that you can do for a thanksgiving theme but remember i never do all of these activities ever like if only my day was long enough and i had enough time we could totally do this <laughs> but these are just some of my favorites some that i've tried in the past and just some ideas i have um, so yeah, so use what you can, toss what you don't like, and we will go from there. And then at the top of this post, you will find links to a blog post that has a Thanksgiving freebie on it, which I'm going to show you in a minute. And there's also links to my TPT store and my website and my Amazon favorites in case you need anything there. All right, I'm going to flip it around and let's go. Okay, so... First things first. Um, this is what this is why um, I was late. So I thought about this and I was like, oh my gosh, we could totally do this. Um, so what I did on here was I drew a turkey and I used this bingo dabber and it has India ink in it um, and it dries super fast. Obviously, I put my hand in it, but it's not a big deal. Um, but I just drew a turkey really quick. Obviously, I'm not a super great artist, but um, we did this during our apple theme, and I drew apple trees, and they loved sorting by color because all of my kids don't know all their colors yet. Um, I have a couple that are mixing up like red and orange, black and brown. Um, so, yeah, so we are still sorting by color just to practice those colors. Um, but I want to give you guys some other ideas on what you can sort by color. So I have these, they are stackable counters. You can find the link to these. I got them off Amazon, but they're awesome because they stack and you can stack them up really tall, make patterns with them, but they're great for sorting my color because look, they have gray and white and brown and black in them, which those colors usually aren't there. So they can sort them by color. And all I do is write the color word in the color with a marker. So yeah, and then if you don't want to sort the button counters, you can always put out these um, dot stickers. I usually get mine from the Dollar Tree. Um, I always cut them up so it's just like one square at a time and then I'll put a trash bucket by the activities just so they can put their trash in the trash bucket. You can also sort letters by color. So they can say the letter Z and then they can put it on. And I know not all um, magnet letters have all the colors, but sort you would you would get two objectives at once. You would be they would be talking and learning letters, and you would be sorting by color. So it'd be challenging everyone, and you could do uppercase, lowercase, whatever you want, and you could use this turkey mat like a couple different times. So maybe um, maybe you don't write the word on here. Maybe you just start sorting that and have that that color on there on each one and then maybe the next day you put foam numbers on there and they have to put like one thing there or they could match dominoes so you could have like a giant number turkey um there's so many things you could do with this it is crazy um but yeah it's just a piece of white paper and again this is just that india ink um i just um, so I've seen it all over um, Instagram, and it's awesome. But if you don't have that India ink, just draw it with a black Sharpie or black marker. Just make sure, you know, obviously you're not going through the table on that. So, yeah, so that's a really, really fun thing you can do. And I'm going to get up and keep going. And another thing that you can do is grab this freebie off my blog. So this is just an I'm thankful for mat. They write what they're thankful for and then they can draw a picture in the middle. And then if you do like a, um, like some kind of lunch or something, or you can laminate them and they can, you can send them home and so you can use them as like a placemat. 
so super fun. This is one a kiddo did. I am thankful for space. He drew the black outer space. <laughs> super cute. Um, so yeah, that's a freebie on my blog. The link is at the top. Um, we did these today. Um, just so I could show you guys tonight. We did um, a directed, like a super fast directed drawing. Um, so because kiddos, they sometimes have to, you have to kind of show them how to draw sometimes step by step. And that's okay. And um, these just happen to be very similar. But a couple of my other ones did not look like this. Like we drew the big belly and then the head. Some of mine drew their head on the top. Some of them drew the head on the bottom. And then they drew legs. And I didn't say like how they had to make anything um, or where. Um, they kind of put them where they wanted. And then they drew the feathers around the edge. And you can tell my feathers are very different depending on the kiddos. So um, three-year-old, four-year-old, um, five-year-old. So you can definitely see the different levels, but they're all drawing and having a blast. And drawing is the first stage in writing, so we got to get them drawing so that they can write later. In my Thanksgiving fine motor pack, I have these um, fabulous line tracers. So they use a dry erase marker, and they just trace the different types of lines. And you could also, too, if you do fine motor journals, have them pick a card, and then they could go to a new page. So they could pick the card, um, trace the line on here, and then they could make that type of line in their journal. Um, just kind of like an extension, so in case they get on board with those, that's another fun thing you could do. Another fun thing you could do are these store ads. Um, these I actually had from last year <laughs> until I grabbed them during Thanksgiving. Um, and I love these little plates. So I'm going to flip it around and tell you some ideas. So some ideas you can do with the store ads are you can have them make a number collage because there's so many prices in here. So they could just cut out the numbers and then glue them on their plate. You could have them cut out the food and put it on their plate. You can have them cut out the letters put it on their plate or words. So you can kind of do all kinds of things with these food ads. They're free, they're awesome. They have all kinds of Thanksgiving foods in them right now, so they're great. So use them because they're free and something different to cut and sort. So yeah, but you can have them do the numbers, you can have them cut out words or have them just cut out their favorite letters or maybe have them find letters in their name. And then I love, these little plates because the big ones sometimes are overwhelming and it seems like a lot of work they have to do. That's why I like the little ones. So if, like if you're doing a number collage, it doesn't look overwhelming, like an overwhelming surface they have to cover. Um, so I love these little plates and they're those little, little cheap ones. You can do a thankful activity. So this activity is, um, there's versions of this both in my thankful pack from my social skills curriculum and in my Thanksgiving centers. But basically, they cut out the feathers, or you can, depending on the age of your kiddo. Or sometimes what I do is I have them cut out one or two, and then I cut out the rest. Um, because sometimes their hands get tired, and it's a lot of work to cut them out. And what I do is I just kind of trim them. So I'll give them each um, these pieces, and then they have to cut it out. You can also, um, use these feathers and make a turkey headband and just put some eyeballs on the front. Super fun with a sentence strip. I don't know about you, but we can't go outside right now because there's snow on the ground. So what I like to do is take these tubs and you can use either a Sterilite tub, like plastic tub, or um, these are like from the Dollar Spot or Lakeshore, but just put puzzle pieces in. And this one, it, these are my Thanksgiving letter pieces. Oh, look at that. I pulled out the, um, a correct one. Um, you can put letter puzzles in there. You can put regular puzzle pieces in these too. It doesn't have to be like a printable. You can do like a floor puzzle or a smaller puzzle, like a hard puzzle, and put the pieces in a little sensory bin, and then they have to do it, um, put it together. But it just adds a little bit more hands-on, get some sensory going. Um, that way, if they can't go outside, they're still getting some sensory in um, because we all know they need it right now, right? But these are great um, because 
they match the letter. Um, right, of course I don't grab any that match anymore. And what I always do is I never put out the whole alphabet. You can see like I have a lot in there, but here's the rest of the alphabet. And if you, like let's say you wanna do this for table time and they wanna work in a group, put out like three or four of these tubs at your table and then just divide the alphabet up into the four tubs and put some of the puzzle pieces like maybe like A through L in one tub and then, you know, M through whatever in another tub. But so it's not overwhelming, but doable. Another fun syllable game is a food game. So I just put some food in this bag. And if you, this is in my Thanksgiving principal pack, um, Mass and Literacy Center's pack. But if you don't have that, that is okay. All you're gonna need to do is use these little plates again and write numbers on them. So write like a one, two, one, two, three, and four, and just write the numbers on them. And then what they do is I have the printable cards. So like macaroni, that one has four. But I always do this too. Like I'll put um, fake food in there, carrot. That way it's just a little bit more hands-on, just a little bit more fun. Corn, and this is, you can tell, like, this is pretend food from the dollar store. So I like to put in a little bag. This is a really fun game to do as a transition, too. They can pick a piece of food out of the bag, clap that many syllables, put it on the plate, and then that person can, like, go wash their hands or whatever your next activity is. So just a paper bag with some food in the bottom. Just go to your pretend center food and put a whole bunch in there. Um, like, I have some asparagus asparagus and then I would put that on four and just fill up those plates another sensory idea is um, this is in my um, math Thanksgiving math and literacy centers and I did update that pack so if you own it make sure you go download that again I updated it last weekend um, but I love corn it's so fun and listen it makes a sound, but it's not really loud and annoying or would bother some kiddos who don't like really loud noises in the classroom. But put some corn in a little bucket. These are those buckets from the Dollar Tree. And then I put the feathers in because they're kind of perfect because they kind of stick right in. And listen to that sound. So fun. And then they can pick a letter, G, and then put it on their um, turkey puzzle. I also like to put in some magnet letters and put it in. And then for those of you who are worried about messes, you can put a tray under this. If you're worried they're gonna you know, get it out, the tray will catch most of it. Um, if they're just a messy class, some kiddos just will get very excited with this and just accidentally get, the, get it out and that's not a big deal. Just put a tray underneath to kind of, as like a catch-all um, for you too. And then if you have pre-K, after they get all the letters, you can have them trace that letter on the principal mat. So you can have some sensory and then letter and sound matching and handwriting. And if your kiddos are little too, don't use the sound or don't use the sound feathers. Just use the letter feathers. That's okay too. And again, I never put out the whole alphabet. I only put out a couple at a time or maybe like six or four. Um, or if my kiddos are bigger, nine, because each of those have four feathers on them. So that's a lot of feathers in the little thing. All right, we're going to keep going. Let me show you some manipulative ideas for the Thanksgiving theme. So obviously feathers. Feathers are so much fun to use um, for manipulatives. I got these turkey mini erasers from my kindergarten grade. Um, so those are really fun. And if you don't have those, just get some pom-poms. I actually got these, I think, on clearance one year. They're kind of like a Thanksgiving, like fall-ish pack. Um, you can always use, um, what is this? I think this, this isn't table scatter. I think this is like sequins, but these are like bigger sequins. So they're really fun for collages or counting um, mini erasers. I have some pumpkin ones. And then this is that table scatter from Hobby Lobby. So I have like pumpkins and acorns 
and there's leaves. These are really fun on the light table. You can sort them. They can sort them by kind or color. You can also use um, fruit or veggie manipulatives. Those are really fun um, for manipulatives as well. You can make a really fun Play-Doh tray with any of this. Um, so yeah, and then I got some turkey games from my kindergarten crate. So I got this game from my kindergarten crate um, and I need to put these in a page protector and then I'm actually gonna copy them. So that way I have more of them. Um, but the kindergarten crate is a monthly subscription box that I get. Um, so that's really fun. And then this game also came in it as well. So they roll the dice and then they put that many in the 10 frame and then they would put that many feathers on the turkey. So if you got the kindergarten crate last month, grab all those things for your, um, for your Thanksgiving theme. So this is a build a turkey game. Um, and this game, if you don't have the printable, what you can do is use brown Play-Doh and make like a ball with it. And that can be your turkey. And they roll the dice. I'm gonna pretend to roll a little number. So two, one, two. And then they put that many feathers on their turkey and they just keep rolling two again one two and they keep rolling until their turkey is full um if you want to make this harder you can have them use two dice and then they roll um and then add and add the two dice and then put the total on the turkey you can also use a number dice with it too to make it a little bit more um challenging Here's another turkey game from my printable pack, and this is the shape version. And then here is the number turkey version. Um, so again, I'm adding some sensory. I got some corn in here, super fun. You can also use these feathers or any kind of number, or you can just even use like flashcards for to make a writing tray, and corn is a really fun writing tray. And if you wanna use numbers, they can, um, count out like I have 10 little pom-poms in the top of my tray and I would count out one two three four and then they would make the number four in their tray and again you don't have to have the turkey feathers these are in my um, Thanksgiving centers pack but you could use any number cards that you have um, for this activity and if you don't have this tray it's no big deal um, whoo just, um, you can use those kid, kid divided plates. You can use any plate that has a lip. You can use a pie pan, um, those foil ones. So yeah, and then I know um, somebody posted in the Pocket of Preschool Facebook group this week that she was so nervous about doing a writing tray and she tried it, but she did the tray underneath. That way it kind of catches whatever falls out or if they do go like this and it bounces out, it does bounce on the tray. So don't be nervous. If you want to try a writing tray, just put another tray underneath and you can do it. So Amber says, how do you get the writing to show in the corn? So the corn is one of those tricky ones. You can't really see it super well. My trick, if you can't see it, I always take some out because less is more in a writing tray. So you see how you can see it better? If I even take a little bit more out, see how it like barely covers the bottom? Like it really doesn't even cover the whole thing. And then they make it. So if you have a bigger, if you have a bigger thing in your sensory or your writing tray, like corn or dried peas, just think, just if you can't see it, just keep taking it out. And the more you take out, the more um, you'll be able to see the writing, and sometimes they can just, they can just double trace it. Say, so write it once, and then write it again. So yeah, all right. And it doesn't have to. You don't have to see it perfectly. Um, in writing trays, I think the whole point is just to get them writing and trying to make it. Um, you can also, if they don't like the feel of the corn in a writing tray, you can have them use a pom pom, which is great for that pincer grasp. And I, I drew on my hand with brown marker on accident, making that turkey. So yeah, it's fun ideas. And then this is the new game I added to my Thanksgiving Math and Literacy Centers. 
Um, so basically they're ex keeping the pattern going. They're extending the pattern. So orange, orange, yellow, orange, orange, yellow, orange, orange, yellow. Cause my kiddos this year are obsessed with patterns, obsessed. And they are knocking them out of the park. We're going to have to move on to some other fun stuff <laughs> for math. Cause they are doing amazing with patterns. Let me show you what you can do for sensory. So for sensory, I actually had um, the beans in for when we did our food theme at the beginning of the month. Um, but you can add in some veggie or um, you can add in some pretend food like the dollar store kind, the bigger kind, and that's okay. Um, you can add in these little bread pans or um, you can add in like the bigger bread pans you can find at the Dollar Tree and they can pretend and cook with the tablespoons and the measuring cups. Um, some kid tongs are great. These are from Walmart. And then I have a couple cans in here so they can pretend like they're um, putting the ingredients in. Um, and then I have a um, set of measuring cups in here as well. And I like to put the bigger beans in with the smaller beans because sometimes they will sort and put those in. And if you wanted, you could always throw in some mini erasers or some of this, these fall sequins or even some table scatter. You could always throw that in here as well. So I don't know if you've seen my video, but I, um, my friend helped me make a fun video with some sensory bottles and look at this one, you guys. So how you make a sensory bottle is, it is, Oh, there's my red feather. I was like, where did it go? So it is, I do, I fill it up halfway with water, and then I do a half a cup of clear glue, glitter, liquid watercolor, and then shake, 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 and then slowly fill the rest to almost the top. You can, can't really see it because the tape is like a half an inch at the top, so there's room to shake. And look. And then I just made this out of foam and put some feathers on the top. And I glue my lid shut, but I always put tape around the top. That way if they're going to pick, they pick at the tape and not my hot glue or whatever kind of glue you use because they pick the glue off and then my sensory bottle explodes or gets all over them. That's not fun. Um, but if they pick the tape, then that's not a bad deal. This one just has pom-poms and yellow glitter. So it's just literally pom-poms. And water. That's it. Pom poms, water, and glitter. This one, these are those like clear floral be floral beads from the dollar store. And there are pumpkin gems in here, so it's kind of like a hide and seek bottle. And they have to try and find them. And obviously there's glitter in there. And then you can hear it. So they have to find the pumpkins hidden in there. And oh, I just use liquid watercolor to color them orange. And then this one, this is why I have the fall like sequence. So it has the leaves inside, see them? So this one is, I wanna say brown liquid water. So I fill it halfway with water, half a cup of clear glue, um, glitter, put the sequins in, and then slowly fill it about half, until there's like a half inch at the top. And then close it, and then how beautiful is that? So pretty. And I just put these in the sensor table, or in the sensor table, I just put these out like in the Discovery Center, and I just kind of put them in the middle of the table um, just for them to explore. And I think I'm going to start making some sensory bottles for maybe just the holiday themes, just for fun, because um, they really seem to be loving the sensory bottles this year. And this one is just dried peas and mini erasers, so they have to just find the mini erasers. So yeah, and I will put a link, I have a blog post with better directions too on my website. All right, so, and you, you can't have a holiday without counting stews. So we used the harvest stew when we did our food theme. 
but I just wanted to show you guys that one since um, I, I still had it out. <laughs> and then this is the turkey stew. So it's really fun. This is like one of my favorite stews, I think. But they have bones. So they're basically just Q-tips, feathers, legs, eyes. And then these are the bellies. So they count out that many. And then they put them in their pot. And then they stir it. And then they sing the song. I'm making some turkey stew. Whip, 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 whip. And then they put it back. And then I have a number line over here because all of my friends can't identify all the numbers yet. So they'll find the number on the card and then they'll find it on the number line and that way they can count how many dots and they can play this game independently with no help. We always play this. Um, I put it out in the morning for morning table time and um, arrival. And then we play it for small groups sometimes, but I only have one stew out at a time. I usually don't have two, but since I had that one out, that one's an option for you as well. And then since you're doing Thanksgiving, what else but a, um, like a my body themed explore. So you can talk about how you need to have healthy foods and do healthy habits, um, to keep your body healthy, even though you're eating all the time at Thanksgiving. So this is just like a healthy, not healthy sort, healthy, whoops, I wish cake was healthy, not healthy. And then I have just some sorting boards. This, all of these printables are in the My Body Science Unit, and then they can make their skeleton with the cut up Q-tips. There's the head. And then these are just some healthy habits that they can talk about. And then I have x-rays over here too. So that's what they are discovering about at the science table. So I wanna show you a fun STEM challenge. So um, I don't know about you, but I can never find like turkey animals. So I took a piece of cardstock, turkey stickers, and I folded it in half. And then I have a whole bunch of little turkeys because they love building turkey huts for their turkey and they can build them with the pattern blocks or the little legos this is also our keep shelf so this little guy wanted to keep his so he can keep up there i also have the big lego so these are our stem drawers there's popsicle sticks in this one there's cups um, and these are just index cards they can kind of build like floors and stack them easier cubes and this one just has tubes, which I need to fill back up. <laughs> we, we must have used those for something. So yeah, so that's a really fun, easy um, way to do um, a, have them do a turkey hut stem challenge, but you don't have to have, it's okay if you don't have a whole bunch of little turkeys, just put little stickers on a piece of cardstock and fold it over. They loved this when we, we did this last year for table time. Um, cause what I'll do is I'll just put out one of these tubs, like literally on each table in the morning. And then I'll put one of these little turkeys at each of their chairs and I'll put this, um, up on the table so they know what the challenge is and they love building the turkey hats. It's one of their favorite, um, things. You could also use, um, the turkey mini erasers. Thanks, Eileen. Um, and then somebody asked what pack is the harvest stew in? So the harvest stew is in the themed, the theme stew pack. The turkey stew is in the holiday stew pack. Or if you buy the giant bu bundle, they're all in there. So let's, let me show you some writing. So this is the writing center. So like always, I just have all of our fun vocabulary words. And if you own my Thanksgiving unit, make sure you download it again because I added color words. Because um, I know some kindergartners and some schools have color words on some of their lists for sight words. So I added all the color words to the pack. And yes, there are lowercase. And then I love adding um, daubers sometimes to the writing center just for a little bit of extra fun, super fun. And I did add a family um, 
writing page two. And then all the books. And if you can't find good Thanksgiving books, because <coughs> they're kind of few and far between, I think I do love, I think this one's one of my favorites, The, I, the Thankful Book by Todd Parr. I love that one. Bear Says Thanks is another one that I love. Um, How to Catch a Turkey is another really good one. And Thanks for Thanksgiving. I love that one too. But you can always use like food books like um, LMNOP, um, Eating the Alphabet, It Look Like Spilled Milk. I really like Slop, um, which is kind of hiding. They love piggy, um, piggy books. Elephant and piggy books. So if you don't have enough Thanksgiving books, no worries. Put out some food books or nutrition books to kind of fill the holes. This is one thing I love to do. Have you guys heard of this book? I love this book. It's on YouTube too. So if you can't find it, go to YouTube and let your class watch it because it is adorable. It's called 10 Fat Turkeys. And they're all on a fence. And they fall off or do different silly things. Um, so I just have them draw a fence and then they read the book and they just take the turkeys down. So it's a great, um, informal subtraction game and they, um, it's a rhyming book and it's kind of a song and it's hilarious. 10 goofy turkeys. Looky hollers another turkey swallowing a bee. Gobble, gobble, wibble, wobble. Mercy there are three. And look at this silly turkey. He's got like a, a boot on his head and oh my gosh, they love this book, it's so funny. It's an old scholastic book, but super fun. All right, let's go to art. Art, art, art. Here's the turkey, so fun. I can't wait to do this next week. So, Play-Doh trays, you have options here, guys. Um, you can do a turkey, so just brown Play-Doh. I usually make, when I do the turkey Play-Doh tray, I make a batch. I actually make homemade Play-Doh for this one. Um, cause brown play-doh is hard to find too also. Um, but then they just make the turkey with feathers and feet and eyeballs. And then I just put up little, um, pipe cleaners so they can make, they can like fold them and make it into a beak or they can use them for legs. And then you can also put a dice in here and they can roll the dice and they can put that many feathers on their turkey and just make a turkey with a little ball. It's super fun. And then this is the Play-Doh tray we had for our last theme. Um, but it's basically just like healthy foods. Super fun. Um, these are just those fruit and veggie counters. These are just some circle cookie cutters. Cup, silicone cupcake molds. Little pans. And I get my little pans from like Home Goods. And then these are those little... These are those food, um, like pretend food utensils from the Dollar Tree. They're in like the toy section, but they're awesome, awesome for Play-Doh because they you can wash them too. So for painting, if your kiddos love to paint, paint with veggies. If you have corn, you can also get, um, if you have corn in season or if you have it at the grocery store, sometimes they randomly do, but they can roll the corn. You can paint with feathers. This one is awesome. You can make puffy paint. Um, you can't see it, but it's like puffy even when it's dry. So how you make puffy paint is it's equal parts and just kind of eyeball it. Shaving cream and white glue. And then you want to either you, you want to use food coloring, not paint. So either make orange with food colors or this is that Wilson's. I want to say it's like a, almost like a gel. I got it from Walmart, but it has orange in it. And I want to say you can just buy orange like this. Um, so yeah, use either one. Of, use either the Wilson's color food coloring or regular food coloring. And then equal parts shaving cream and glue and just kind of fold it together. And then they put, make their pie with it. And then my, you guys know my kiddos love just cutting little strips this year. So just put out some strips and they can cut little pieces and they put it around the edge to make the crust. And because there's glue in the paint, they don't need glue. It sticks. And then put a, um, a dollop of whipped cream on top or just use a cotton ball. Super fun. I'm really excited to make these. Love puffy paint. So fun. 
if you want to be creative and do, I know some of us love hand prints. I know some of us don't like hand prints, but this is a really cute like take home um, little thing you can do with them. So it's a turkey towel and I use these bar mop towels from Walmart. And if you find them, get like, get them because I usually buy them when it's don't, don't wait and buy them like the week, um, like buy them now. Like don't wait until the holiday season because they're always gone. Um, cause they're cheap and they're great for crafts, <laughs> um, and presents. You can also use these for like, um, like a Christmas or a holiday mom just put like um a holiday hand print thing on it um but what they do is they paint their hand on and this is kind of the tray I use I had to do one kiddos today because he's not going to be here um the um for like a couple days because he has to do um he has to go to the doctor and have a couple things done so I did his today but all I do is I I paint his hand and then this is my trick which I'll have to go back over his see how it's kind of like you can't like the paint didn't go all the way in what I do afterwards is I'll take a little paintbrush and I'll go back in and get all the spots that didn't press down really well so it'll go from this to this so it'll just be a little bit better and I won't like I won't change like the outline I'll just kind of paint in the middle a little bit and then I add little feet with my paintbrush and then I will go back in and that's their their little pinky finger or their finger for the gobbler and when I do this I put just a piece of paper you can see it right there a piece of paper in, and I leave it folded how it is so I have my tray, so I have my towels, I have the paper to put underneath, and then I keep a baby wipe. So I give them, here's his from today. So I'll do his handprint, and then I give him a baby wipe at the table and to wipe his hands off or their hands off, and then they go to the sink because if this is, this is that permanent acrylic paint, I don't want them to get it on their clothes or them or, you know, the cabinets or whatever so they get most of it off with baby wipe and I just keep it in my tray and then they go wash off the rest so that is my trick and they are the mainstays the Walmart brand bar mop towels and you get six in a pack so yeah and they're thin but they're just oh my gosh they're so cute you will have happy parents for sure okay oh yeah sorry so um, for Amber was asking if this is on a paper plate, and yes, it is, sorry. So we just paint the pie on a paper plate. Thanks, Amber, sorry about that. And then another fun one, if you, like, because I know some of us aren't allowed to use shaving cream, you can do fork paintings, or you can really paint with any utensil. This is my, this is my trick to keep, like, my paint or whatever that I'm doing. If I want to keep it for the next day, I just kind of put some plastic wrap over it. Um, it doesn't say perfect, but it works good enough <laughs> um, to use it a couple days. But just take, this is one of those sorting trays or those food trays from the dollar store. And then I just put a fork in each one. And then they just paint with the forks to create these beautiful masterpieces. So pretty. And you wouldn't think painting with a fork is hard, but they have to like move their wrist a lot to go back and forth and then to scrape or even like to spread it around. It's a really, really good um, fine motor activity. And you're also not painting with paintbrushes, so you're kind of mixing it up, doing something new. Oh, and that went in the paint. Well, it'll be fine. And then I usually, the next day, I'll just add a little bit to it. Um, and then I'll usually wash it on day three. Here usually only, usually you can get it to last about two or three days or two or three class sessions. So I'll get it to last all week because I teach Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And here are our, our plate. We made some plate collages with some food magazines. I love this guy. Look, so, so healthy. And he was like, I, these are my favorite foods. I love these. And then we got this guy who loves pizza. So yeah, uh-oh. Sorry, Facebook yelled at me. I can't turn my phone. Um, Nicole's saying you can do, um, you can do a turkey track painting too with um, pipe cleaners. That's another fun turkey art activity. Thank you, Nicole, for that idea. 
Um, so, so people are asking questions about these turkey towels. Um, I would say just um, hand wash them the first time. And then after that, I just throw them in the wash, like washing machine, like normal, just in case you would get some like weird, you just never know. I just tell everybody to hand wash them the first time. And then after that, they can just throw them in the laundry. Like it's no big deal. Um, yes. And it is acrylic paint and it's not washable. So yeah, it's, this is that like 50 cents paint from like Walmart. Um, and then Annie has a great idea. Make sure you watch your grocery store ads for alcohol and adult things. So yes, thanks Annie. That is a great, <laughs> a great suggestion. And then if you want even more thankful activities, um, this is my, it's from my thankful social skills pack. Um, but it's all the things they're thankful for. Um, and it's basically an anchor chart. So you make it with them. And then they, I, I, what I do is I have the turkey on there. And then they say, what, what, what are you thankful for? And then I kind of um, put them up as they say. And whatever they don't say at the end, then I um, put those on. And some other things you can do that are super easy, whether you buy uh, my pack or not. You can also do thank you cards. And you don't have to use... The ones that say thank you really big, you can just like fold paper in half and have them write thank you on it. Um, you can do a thankful tree in your classroom. Um, this is one that's actually in my pack and I'll, I think we're gonna make this this year. So I just give everybody a leaf or two and then with a little note and then they come back and then we make, we they um, put them on their tree and we make a big gorgeous tree with it. Um, what else? Here's the anchor chart. And if you want to reuse this, um, this is the one I use every year, and then I just take it apart. Um, I just laminate the pieces. That way I can make it again the next year. You can totally tell that was glued to a chart. <laughs> and then there's also a black and white one, or black and white copy. Um, so you just copy it on colored paper. And that's the writing center idea. And then... Here is the craft. And you can also do, these are more of a like, kind of like a coloring page, but you can um, do thank you posters for your first responders so they can color it and then you can send them in to um, your local fire station or police station. So all of those things are in this I Am Thankful pack. And if you don't want to do the I am thankful, it's always really fun too to do um, families at this time and look at um, families, um, photos of real families. Um, but this is this anchor chart, um, that one, and then you can even do this class book. Um, it's kind of like the All About Me book, but it's supposed to be about their family. Um, and so you guys can make that too. And that is in my TBT store as well. I'm going to flip it around. So I think, I think that is everything um, that I have for you. So hopefully you guys got a ton of fun ideas. Oh, let me show you pretend. Forgot. Okay. So a grocery store is a really fun thing to do for Thanksgiving since they're going to be going to the grocery store buying all the things. So I kind of divide it up until we have like our refrigerator section, our freezer, we have our checkout, and then we have like the pantry section. And the grocery store has so, so much sorting in it because I have them sort by boxes, if it's a can, and then if it's a jar or a bottle. And then if you're also just starting out with changing your dramatic play to different themes. Grocery stores are really perfect one to start because you get, they'll wash all these containers for you and you'll get all of these fun foods and they're their foods um, from their house. So it's a great way um, to add some culture to your classroom as well. Um, but it kind of gives you like a starter for um, some food for all your other themes that you're gonna do as well. Um, and then I, this is my produce section. 
So a lot of these are just, these are those, these are trays are from, they're like Melissa and Doug cars come in them, but I love them for science and for the pretend. Um, but we just use pom-poms and little pipe cleaners. And then we have little bags. And then I have tweezers to add in some fine motor. So they have to get out their green beans and then they can weigh them. And then our lettuce is just some cut up paper, super simple. I wanted to show you a new idea I had for the grocery store. Cause I think meat's always hard. So I took our pretend meat, that's like a plastic steak. And I just put it on a plate and I covered it in like wrap. Cause that kind of looks like, um, like it does in the grocery store, right? So we have, they have steak or they can buy um, some chicken. How fun is that? And then for the cheese, if they're, if your families are so sweet and they bring in food, like um, cheese wrappers or containers, put in some sliced paper and it's super fun. Um, way to have some cheese in your grocery store. And then if you have either printable grocery ads or you can use real ads to add some environmental print and um, numbers and letters and all the things. These are like Walmart ones I just laminated. And then have them do price tags. There was tape in here, I don't know where it went. So they can either use the ones with the prices or they can write the price with the dry erase marker and then they just tape it on. They can also write sales if something is on sale. I don't know where they put our tape. Hmm? And then they can also walk around and take inventory, which is a really fun way to sneak in some math. Apparently we had 12 of everything except just one bottle and one box. How funny. Yeah, and then we have our checkout. And um, one of the little, little girls had her, um, she had goldfish for her birthday treat. So the, one of the kids was like, put these in the grocery store because there's snack bags at the checkout. And so we have little snack bags at the checkout and I just rinsed them out with water. Um, and then I don't have any allergies in here, friends. So I, I, it's, it's okay if that I have Reese's. So take a breath, <laughs> all my friends. Um, so yeah, so I don't have any peanut allergies this year. So I have just some candy wrappers because there's candy at the checkout and now they're matching by color and you would be surprised. Well, probably not because kids love candy, but they talk about the candy like crazy. Like those are Skittles that has an S on it. No, those are M&Ms. See the big M? They love talking about the candy, all the candy. But yeah, and then after you're done with grocery store, save the really awesome ones like this is how I get like a lot of my like ketchup and jelly and maybe stuff that you don't eat save those containers and then you have them other themes and on can so I have a pampered chef can opener that I've had for like 10 years when I sold pampered chef like forever ago um but it has a smooth edge so that's why I have cans um but if you don't have a smooth edge just really be careful about those so if you want to get cans in your classroom, get a Pampered Chef can opener, and they're awesome. Smooth edge and everything. Um, so um, I somebody's asking about where do I laminate my bigger pieces. So like my store ads and stuff, I will take those sometimes to Office Max, and they'll laminate them. But you can also – hold on, let me flip it around. So I just learned this trick. Let me show you. Walk over there. So, and with your laminator, you can. Um, I'm gonna flip it around. Sorry. If you have like something that's long, can you kind of see it, guys? What you can do is you can put it in, and then really, you can barely see it. I'll have it hang over a little bit. So what you would do is just tape it. Right here, just a little piece on each side, and you can run it through. So then you, if you have something that's longer, you can run it through. Um, but if it's long and wide, then um, then I usually just take it to Office Max and I laminate it there. Um, sometimes my other trick is I will fold things in half 
and I'll laminate it, fold it in half, and then I use an X-Acto knife and I cut it open and then I fold it in half the other way and then both sides are laminated, so it's kind of like a cheat. <laughs> um, it's not the best, but it works. So and then I don't have to go to Office Max and pay to have stuff laminated. A little cheat for you there. But yeah, so that is all the things. And I know on my curriculum map, I said, I, what was it? I think we were gonna do like a, where I was gonna change, pretend to like a pizza restaurant. And I don't think we are because they are loving grocery store and the conversations and the vocabulary and just the interactions is amazing. So I think we're gonna keep it all month, grocery store. And that's okay, guys. Like if you, if your kiddos are loving a pretend center or if you maybe, you feel stressed and overwhelmed, you don't want to change it. And I don't know why I'm so bright tonight. Sorry, guys. I'm like a ghost. I'm like shining bright or yellow. Um, uh, feel free to just, you know, say, you know what? We're going to keep this all month. Because dramatic play, it ta I, th I think <laughs> um, it's a lot of work to change sometimes. Especially if you're starting new. Um, but if your kids are, like, loving a theme in dramatic play, just keep it. Um, and just kind of roll with it. And then they, if they get bored with it and maybe you have one week left of a theme, just change it back to like home living for like a week or two. Um, and I just spoke when I speak at um, conferences about dramatic play. Um, if you're just starting out changing dramatic play every month or for every theme, um, give yourself some grace. And what you can do is um, like one, do like for one month, do like grocery store. And then for the next month, change it back to home living. And then the next month, change it to like ice rink. And then the next month, change it back to home living. But that way you have a little bit of time to prep and do all the things and get the next one ready. Um, and that way you're not super stressed because they love home living. Home living. Um, so if you just kind of, or maybe you do two pretends, like maybe you do grocery store and then vet and then you change it to home living for a month. So don't feel like you always have to change it. Um, if it's stressing you out or maybe something happened and you're, you fa have family things going on, change it back to home living for a month. No stress. You can always change it um, for the next theme. Well, you guys have a fabulous night and I will see you soon. Bye.